Praise be Jesus Christ. As Christians, we obviously have responsibility to be Christians and not just to have the name. Our very substance has to be Christian. And to be substantially a Christian means to be Eucharistic. It means to have Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ as the Eucharist, in the Eucharist, the Blessed Sacrament, as the source and the summit of our life, as teaches the documents of the Church. How do we do that though? We all know that. We all know that how important the Eucharist is. We have some idea and we know that uh, it's got something to do with us growing in holiness. We know it has something to do with us getting to heaven. But have we ever thought about how to make it a much more important part of our life? Or rather the most important part of our life? There are three means, necessary, necessary means, which we can all do, you, which you can all do to varying degrees according to your capacity and your opportunity. But they, should, they all need to be done. Uh, they, they all need to be done, is what I'm trying to say. The first is basically what we call study. We need to come to know this mystery of the Eucharist. The Church has given us many great means by which to understand that which we believe. And if we don't make an effort to come to understand that which is sent, most central to our faith, then uh, we really, it, it is a sign that we really don't understand what it is, what God's love is to us. This mystery of love, which is the Eucharist, is presented to us in many beautiful ways. First and foremost in the scripture. For those of you who are scripture buffs and scripture scholars, already know all the passages where you can find the, uh, the parts on the Eucharist. But just in case you're not or you've forgotten, open up your Bibles Go to, chapter, uh, to the Gospel of John, chapter 6, verse 30 and onwards. It's called the Eucharistic Discourse. It is basically the doctrinal, uh, the, the doctrine of the Eucharist, of the substance of the Eucharist, of what it is, of the, the fact that it is Jesus Christ's real body, blood, soul and divinity, and the fact that we must partake of it if we hope to have eternal life, if we hope to have life at all. And then once you've read that, you can read the institution narratives found in the first three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and in uh, Corinthians, 1 Corinthians. And then to understand more, open up that beautiful book, green, yellow, whatever color version you have, of the Catechism. Look up the chapter on the Eucharist. And even if you've done it once, if you did it five years ago or last year, open it again. It won't take long to read it. And then from the, from the Catechism, there's lots of footnotes and references, and you can go and find out all these other great sources of our faith, doctors of the church, papal encyclicals, homilies of the popes, other, um, other councils and catechisms of the church. These things were not written just so they could sit on a shelf or be on an internet file so that we could ignore them, but they are there so that we may come to know God and come to know this mystery of the Eucharist. We cannot love if we do not know. So it's very important that we make an effort, that we don't just assume to be a Catholic it's enough to go to church. That is the minimum we must do. The second means in order to become a Eucharistic people has to do with the Mass. Has to do with attending the Mass. Now clearly I'm assuming that you're attending the Mass every Sunday. If you're not doing that then we've really got to go back down to real basics. But first of all, that is the first thing you must do. Recognition of the importance of attending the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. Not just because someone said to do so, but because of what it is God wishes to give us during the Mass. We give Him an hour. We get to listen. Maybe we have to do a bit of penance and listen to a homily which we'd rather not listen to. And then God gives us everything. But we must prepare ourselves before we go spiritually and physically first of all spiritually clearly confession you don't have to go to confession every time you receive communion you do have to go to confession every time you fall unfortunately into mortal sin though and if you want to receive communion and you should go to confession minimum once a month i mean you should that's what the saints say 
The church says you, should, you only have to go once a year. And that's the minimum in the mercy of, of, of God's church. Say that, look, that's the minimum you have to do. But if you're serious about pleasing God and preparing yourself to receive Him, who is body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Blessed Sacrament, then you want to keep your soul as clean as possible, as prepared as possible, to receive as many graces, helps from God as possible, that this great sacrament of reconciliation can give you. And so you should go there to prepare yourself spiritually, to wipe away those sins, be them mortal or be them venial, or even those faults, and ask God for help. Don't be afraid to ask questions and pray for the priest that he might give you good counsel. And then there's to do the second part, the second means, there's the preparation, the physical preparation, if you will. We live in a society, especially here in Australia, where we don't really think much about uh, modesty, for example, about the fittingness of dress. I remember, I think it was Father Benedict Rochelle was saying in America, he says, uh, he goes to the very poor parishes and they dress very well when they come to church. He goes to the middle class parishes and they dress as if they're on the way to the beach. He goes, he goes to the richest parishes and they, they're clothed as if they've just come back from the beach. We have to remember that when we come to Holy Mass, it can't just be, I'm going to Mass and I'm going out. It's just something I'm just going to stop by and I'm going to dress for the next thing. This is the summit of our life. And if we can't treat it as such, then we are all upside down and inside out and back to front. We have to get our priorities right. And so when preparing for Mass, spiritually and physically, we need to look at what we're wearing. We need to think, I'm going to be in the presence of a king. Not just any old king, but the king of the universe and the creator of all things and God himself and my father. Do I really want to be seen like this? And not, not only that, I mean, it doesn't mean you come to church dressed in a tuxedo or a ball gown. Please don't do that. But it does mean that you need, we need to look at what we're wearing dressed modestly so that in front of God we cannot be ashamed and we won't, bring any, we won't be distracting anybody else. It's a very important thing. It's the kind of thing that I'm much happy to say during winter when everyone's cold and clothed well. But during summer, you know, especially if you're in a parish near the beach, it's a real issue. And it really shows maybe not so much bad will on the side of the people, but it shows a lack of consideration of who God is. Who is here in front of you? Finally, the third thing, which is uh, together with the first two, is that we need to make the Eucharist the very soul of our life. It needs to become the very center of our life. It really needs to become the source of our life and the summit, that from where, from where we come and that through which we go. We can do that, of course, by using these first two means, to know God better and to attend the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass more worthily but it also means that we need to do that preparation to receive him and to know him that preparation which is known as remote or proximate preparation saint maximilian colby when he uh, when he was a priest at least when he was a priest his whole day was a day dedicated to the eucharist from about lunchtime onwards he would prepare himself to receive communion and after Holy Communion, after the Mass, he would spend that, 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 that half of the day in Thanksgiving. So his whole day was either Thanksgiving or preparation. We need to imitate. We need to imitate it. We need to make sure that we are in union with God in every moment of the day. How do we do that? By simple words of love towards God. God, I love you. By spiritual communions, Jesus, come into my heart. These very, they're very easy to say. Saint Maximilian, again, used to do a spiritual communion he used to strive to do one every 15 minutes. I suspect he had one of the, the old clocks that used to chime every 15 minutes, which would have reminded him, we can do one every 15 seconds. You need to do it as often as possible. Our Lord appeared to, I believe it was St. Margaret Mary, and he had two chalices, a golden one and a silver one. And he said, the golden one are the sacramental communions that you've made, and the spiritual and the, the silver one is a spiritual communions that you've made. Now clearly there's a difference between the two. But he said to St. Margaret Mary, they are both 
very pleasing to me. These spiritual communions are particularly useful for preparing, us, for preparing ourselves for sacramental communion. We need to excite ourselves. It doesn't mean, I don't mean emotionally. You don't have to get into ecstasy and start flying around the room whenever you come into the presence of our Lord. That's not what it's about. It's about coming to know Him and giving to Him what is His due. This is called the virtue of religion, which comes from the virtue of justice. To give to God what is His due. And doing this, then we are already being a Eucharistic people. We might be discouraged sometimes though when we look at ourselves and say, I am far from being what I should be. I am far from being that Eucharistic person that I would like to be. I have all these bad habit, habits. I am constantly distracted. I pick up the catechism. I open the first page and I'm asleep before I'm at the end of the first paragraph. But it's good to recognize these things because in recognizing this, we can repeat with St. Paul, it is in my weakness that I am strong. God already knows that you are weak, that we are weak. But what he wants to see is our goodwill. And goodwill is another word for love. Goodwill towards God. God, I want to love you. I want to know you in the Blessed Sacrament. Teach me, give me a zeal, give me a heart only for you. And it's only when we have a heart for Jesus Christ in the Eucharist that we can have a heart, a real heart, and a real love for anything else. Because he is precisely that, the source and summit of all. Of all that is good. The last means, which is, would be the fourth means, but really is the first and the last and the most important means, is that devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary. St. Maximilian Kolbe again. As you know, he was very probably the greatest Marian saint that we ever had in all history. While that might be debatable among some, he certainly was crazy over Our Lady. He called himself a fool of Our Lady, fool for love of her. And yet, if you read his writings, he had the strongest Eucharistic devotion that I have ever seen in a saint. There was even a book, uh, it's called For the Life of the World, which is just dedicated to his Eucharistic devotion. Because devotion to Our Lady is devotion to the Eucharist. St. Louis de Montfort says this as well. You can't, whatever you give to her goes to him and she guides you to him. We must not miss out this link. It is an essential link. Essential because that's how God has deemed it to, to be so. And it is fitting to be so. The mother brings us to the son and we imitate her love for him. At the end of this day then, we should, as always, on this day of prayer, it's somewhat of a day of retreat, Try and make a little bit of a resolution. To not be satisfied with the love that we have for God or the love that we have for our Lord in the Eucharist especially. To no longer be lukewarm, to no longer be flippant or blasé when we receive our Lord. You know, nothing, nothing hurts the heart of a priest, a fervent priest more than to see someone receive our Lord and then walk away as if they just received a biscuit or something. When you receive him, receive him knowing whom you are receiving. When you speak to him, speak to him knowing who you are speaking to. When you come into his house, prepare yourselves and conduct yourselves knowing where you are. If you can take this on board and if you make these resolutions to change, then I assure you, then very shortly your lives will change. Peace will start to reign more. And despite the troubles and the agonies and the difficulties and the temptations which will probably still come, you will find and you will experience the knowledge, if not the feeling, that God is with you. And He is already with us. He just asks us to be with Him. Let us then imitate and pray to these great saints, St. Maximilian, St. Louis, Louis Marie de Montfort, and to our Blessed Mother herself, the Mother of the Eucharist, that they may pray for us and teach us what it is to be Eucharistic and what it is, therefore, to be holy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.